We'll do uh, value-add multifamily. Um, we have the ability to close quick and provide a high amount of leverage. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and I'm happy to talk with your exchange cards and share how we can fit into certain projects for you and be a good capital partner. We also do a lot of good underwriting and stress testing your deals. Um, in our other company, Lucerne Capital, we own and manage uh, multifamily housing up and down the East Coast. We have about 400 units, and we're we're acquiring a few more right now, actually down in Charlotte. So you know we're going through this on a regular basis, and it allows us to also step in and help you underwrite and close on deals when you need it. So if you do need funding or just want to talk about how to look at a deal and how capital can play a part in it, you know I'd be happy to connect with you. The last thing I'll say. And I know there's probably a very varied skill set of people here, is that you know understanding what capital to use for each deal is important, and there are different tools that you need in your tool belt. So there are stabilized assets where you're going and getting Fannie and Freddie money, or you're going to go to a local community bank for your two to four family, or maybe there's a value add piece where you need uh, that hard money lender or the private bridge lender to help you get the leverage and stabilize the asset. So um, I welcome any conversations. Like I said, I'll be around, you can exchange cards, and uh, you know, I appreciate being part of the event. Yeah, what David said, it's super important, right? If you're not gonna just have one loan that's gonna work for every property. So you wanna be able to talk to your lenders, because you're gonna find a property and find out what's gonna be the best loan type for that property. David's got a lot of experience in the multifamily side to give you a lot of different components, but the more banks, the more people you can talk to, because you want to get ahead of that because you don't want to get the property and ultimately, you know, then say, okay, i got to find a bank and find that bank and that bank wants 75 pieces of materials from you and now it's chewing up your time and trying to actually get this thing closed and ultimately kills the deal for you. All right, so from there, let's jump into our questions. Who nailed all, who got all these answers right? Everyone. There you go. One, two, three. Okay, cool. Good. Good. All right, this property is being marketed to sell at a six cap. So, Cap rate's your way to really just value properties across different formats so you can have an even keel approach. So ultimately, if you were to buy a property with all cash, what's that return going to look like? And the way this is important for you is it, it allows you to either just basically evaluate like properties or properties across different asset classes. Maybe you're looking at, um, you know, I, I don't know, a like Denny's or, or a multifamily property or a car wash, and you're looking at the return you get from each of these properties, you can buy them all in, uh, in cash, and you'll look at what that return would look like across different properties. So here, this property, 
say the broker is telling us it's a six cap property based on the value uh, off the T12, which is going to be our net operating income. Um, what would we come up with here? Who's got that answer? Let's see what I got. Seven, 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 seven. What do you got? Seven million thirty-three thousand one twenty-six. Okay. Way we got to that year. So the the net operating income, uh, which was the income minus expenses, net net ordinary income here was four hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars and change. Dividing that by a six cap gives us that answer of seven million thirty-three thousand. But say we go in there for, you know, like a teacher. Uh, say we go in there for the point and you know through our analysis and through what we see other properties trading for or you know we just get some better feedback from uh, you know maybe appraisers that we believe it's actually a seven category well based on that value that's actually going to take the value of the property down so based on a seven cap meaning that it's going to take us we get a, a seven percent return if we we're buying all cash what would that value of the property be Six million twenty eight. Per. Let me just put this down. Jump with these. We have better there. I got too, too much going on up here today, guys. All right, cool. So yeah, so those are our numbers right there. Um, you guys want to talk them through, but basically, this is our way just to value an asset in the forefront. And why, why is it important? It just gives us a good read. We're going to dive into each wall and see is it, you know, is it actually is it, is it true? Does it make sense for us? Does all that actually work out? But again, on a high level, we can look at the property, and if they're asking 20 million, and based on the value, you know, it's, it's only saying 7 million, well, maybe there's an issue. Or maybe if it's, you know, they're asking 2 or 3 million, well, okay, maybe there's some more value in there. What's the story here? It gives us a pretty easy approach just to understand what the actual value of the property is. All right, so that for, uh, further, you find the expenses are actually 4,100 a unit. Uh, they did us the service here of actually showing us on the T12 that the expenses uh, per unit were $3,700 or $3,746.99. Uh, Meaning for each unit for the entire year, it's going to cost us $3,700 a unit. So maybe that's cheap. You know, maybe they, they didn't factor in that they had you know, turn costs or they forgot to put in you know, maintenance or whatever. So talking to our property managers, talking to other people, we actually find out that it should cost us stabilized around $4,100 a unit. Well, because it's going to have higher expenses and going to cost more, well, that's going to decrease our property there. So looking at it here, that's going to take our, our net operating income down from where we were, $421,000, down to $373,000 because you're basically adding on another $400, give or take, a unit per year. Make sense? Cool. So the value at seven cap now dips down to 5.3 million from before at the same cap of six million. Did I check my math? Am I, am I on there? Yep. Cool. Okay. So taxes. Taxes are important because you're going to look here, right? You're going to look at, at different areas. You're going to be definitely assessed differently. You know, we um, I don't know where I, I was actually seeing my wife's family in. Hawaii, I was talking to someone in Hilo, and I was asking how taxes are assessed. They're assessed every year based on, um, you know, on, on sale value or property value. Every area is going to be different. You know, Louisville is 1.026 um, of their assessed value, or Lexington, uh, it's 1.27 percent of sales price. So, you know, something to that point. So, I used that just as, as a marker because I knew these. But basically, you want to look at every area and find out what that taxes is because if the property is currently having taxes per year of $30,000 and you forget to change what the new value of your tax will be, it's going to be a big hit your income because if you go from $30,000 and you buy the property and it's you know, $70,000 and you didn't factor that in, it's going to be a huge surprise when you get to the finish line. So based on a uh, purchase price at a, at a seven cap, um, and I think I was going on the first one right there, it's going to be $76,526 uh, or $1.27 there. You guys get that? Cool. Okay. Um, number four, and some of these have more answers than one, right? So I'm throwing in just top top level uh, answers right here. All tenants are on year leases. The broker performer shows in year one you can obtain, uh, or you will obtain, 100 hour rent bumps per month in all units. What problem exists? Well, the day you take over the property, you don't just the leases don't just uh, cease, and you can't just actually just 
take everybody and jack their rent. So you're not going to have this transition where day one you're just going to automatically say, everybody, your rent's $100 more, and it's not even going to happen. That's going to happen over time. I mean, it may be three months, six months, maybe 18 months, depends on how much actually you have to turn that property. So you want to be careful factoring this into your income because ultimately, if you're factoring this in, you're going to be able to capture all this year one, well, you're going to have a big problem with your return. Same thing with your expenses. If you know you should be operating at 4100 a unit, and maybe right now it's operating at $5,000 a unit, that doesn't mean the day of takeover that, that you're just going to fix all this. So you have that delta of the time, how long is it going to take you to reach this? So you may talk to your property manager and say, okay, this is, I don't know, 150 units. Well, how many units can you guys turn a month? How many guys, oh, we can turn 10 a month. Well, of that 10 a month, well, how, how many do you feel you can lease at a time? Like, what's the leasing traffic like around here? So if I'm turning 10 a month, and they only feel confident, well, maybe they can lease five a month, well, I may have a lot of units just basically I'm just putting money out here that are sitting dead until they have the next turnover for, for, uh, for tenants coming in. So having that conversation with people really gives you that step up. All right, so I left this one up to you guys. What are, what are some of the uh, line items, income line items, I guess that was good, uh, that you can have three questions, go back to the broker and clarify. Who's got some questions? Because I actually didn't look at this until I just know. Yep. And that's why the debt write-off goes down in June and October. Good. Yeah, yeah. Real good. Yeah. Who else has something? Obligation to start in September as well. To what? Obligation to start in September. Yep. I would ask this, you know, what happens in March 17 versus April 17? Utility reimbursement. Yep. But well, we have gross potential rents jump $9,000 a month from March to April. They also start with application. They do, yep. And every time they're lost, they just assume it's the property we work for, right? Uh, application fee start at that point. What else do we have in here? Utility reimbursements. You see this for a fact here that they started this somewhere in May and June, someone mentioned. So why, what are they charging back for here? What's the big delta in September? Is that maybe the water bill is only charging? What is the big delta? They're getting 4,200 back. Um, if you're looking at delinquent prepaid rent, you have a negative 17,000 in October. These are some of the areas that you just want to get you know, clarity on because you're going to be able to have to underwrite these. You want to know, well, which is the true number? Which is the number that I'm actually going to be using as part of my analysis when you get deeper into it? Anybody have anything else here I missed? I would say for, for the, we got what, bad debt, right? Uh, $41,000 bad debt, the link one prepaid rent, $12,000. But what are the court fees? $480. Bucks. So are these guys all just, you know, being good people and just saying, okay, we'll leave on our own terms? Where did, where's the eviction cost? Where, where's all that in there? Then you want to talk to your property manager, okay, how do you guys handle evictions? Like, you know, when you file, how long does it take? What's the cost for the lawyer? Because if everybody's seen New York State, it just happened there. So you want to know what your state's about there. <coughs> what else do we have here? Anybody have anything else? I couldn't find all the good ones. There we go. Uh, vacancy, three more lines. So they jumped. Pretty big in the, for the vacancy loss right in September. So you, you may want to see was that, you know, did they have a bunch of leases that, that expired at the same time that they couldn't renew? What are these big deltas in the number? Because as you take over this property, you want to know which side of the corner you're going to be on right here. So if you have your vacancies going from $5,000 up to now fourteen, ten, dollars now back on the five, what's going on in these two months here that are really standing out? A lot of late fees, right? How are they charged? Like, how are they dealing with late fees? What's their with the process right there? And Michael mentioned application fees, right? So late. Yeah, sort of late, like to like. Yeah. So what's happening with the application fee? They're not charging them. What it, what's the story there? They like what's their leasing criteria? Like, how are they letting people in the building? Because ultimately, again, leases don't just stop with buy. So how do 
you guys assess tenants when they're coming in, because ultimately they're going to be my tenants. And even now, like we have a tenant that may go into collections or we may have to evict. I'm always looking at it. Uh, question will go back, is this a legacy tenant? I want to know if this is a tenant that we basically put in there and you know, went through the application process, or is this a tenant that was back from the prior owners that is just you know left over bad apple? And I can tell you a story based on how your application process is going with property management company. Make sense? Yep. Cool. Um, so controllable and non-controllable expenses, pretty much like it said, there's gonna be things out of your control like tax and insurance uh, that you're, you're gonna have to pay. And then you're gonna have other points of controllable expenses um, like you know, you, you can start improving on you know water usage, or you can uh, improve on your maintenance staff. So there's different points where you can control on your expenses. So breaking those down, you're gonna look at your expenses per unit. Um, you know, I think um, we have friends in uh, San Antonio. It's thirty-five hundred dollars a unit, uh, without not including taxes and insurance. And that the tax and insurance are so staggering that that number could be five thousand, six thousand dollars per unit after they add on those, but just for all their operations of controllable expenses, it's about $3,500 per unit. 